I'm Tom Johnson, Thomas Johnson Antique Furniture Restoration in Gorham, Maine. This is an American Empire pier table. That's pier spelled P-I-E-R. That refers to a pier wall, which is a wall between two windows. So you've got two windows, wall, a pier table, and above that a tall matching mirror. It's built around uh, 1830 to 1840. It's actually an amazingly uh, good shape. There's, uh, everything is veneered. I think almost every surface is veneered, except for the columns. And everything's in really good shape. It kind of needs just a cleaning and a waxing. But the top is where we have our real problems. This whole area here, there must have been a pot sitting here for a very long time and just destroyed the veneer. And the veneer is coming up in lots of other places also. And of course, once more, I refer to the Antiques Directory for help in identification. This one appears to have a marble top. The first thing I'm going to do is try to remove the top. Yeah, you can see the screws. I just realized I can't get to these screws in here. Okay, on to plan B. We just need to figure out what, uh, what plan B will be. I was going to bring this up at some point during the show, but I had noticed previously these massive screws, uh, which appear to be massive screws, they're all through this back. In fact, there's 12 of them. I can see now this back isn't just a back. It's uh, very structural. It's massive. It goes to the floor. I think if I take it off, this piece will come apart. I need to do it face down because when this back is removed, there'll be no support for the top except where it sits on the columns in front. These screws have uh, well-made machine-cut threads, which I'm sure they figured out by 1825. You'll still notice a lot of variation in the heads of the screws. This thing feels ready to move. I realized I should uh, take the glass out first. This doesn't look like an old mirror. This glass is like eight millimeters thick. That's like five sixteenths. This took a lot of uh, a lot of heating and prying. You know, we all say uh, hide glues reversible. Well, it is not easily reversible. It's very strong, and if you've got joints that are good tight joints, and and especially if you cannot access them, it's not coming apart easily.
Okay, I didn't know until this moment whether or not this was glued to the surface or not. Sometimes that happens. You know, these surfaces in here uh, are too smooth for early 19th century. They make me wonder about the age. Okay, the first thing I want to do is glue down all the loose veneer. Off camera, I tried putting this down with a hot iron. It seemed to work, but then eventually it came back up again. I'm going to start off by doing this area right here. This board will be my platen. Note that I have a piece of plywood under the top also. And that will help. It just everything just helps spread the pressure out. Let's see what we got. All these bubbles and ripples uh, can't really get under these with the knife. So what I intend to do is, is warm up this area uh, with the heat gun and then work glue, get glue where I can get the knife. The other small cracks I'll just work glue in with my finger best I can clamp it up. Alright, this area is good and warm now and I can work glue under this big bubble. And then I'll just try to work glue, for what it's worth, into these cracks. Everything's nice and warm, so I'm hoping that helps get it in there and maybe meld with some of the old glue. Give it another quick uh, warm up here. A 
Okay, now I'll do the same routine to this area here. Even though I can get the knife under a lot of these areas, I like the idea of warming it up. It, it works better. The, this veneer that's so brittle, it helps keep it a little more flexible. I'm going to heat it up again for a good measure here. Okay, let's do it again. Okay, so now I can do the loose veneer surrounding what will be our patch. do this. I'm hoping today that I can uh, start with the patch. I'll clean up a little of this glue in here. I don't mind the glue being there, but I don't want it to disrupt uh, the edges like that. I've got this cleaned up uh, pretty well. Now I'm thinking about my patch. I know some people are going to suggest like making a like a diamond shaped patch and I understand where that's coming from. But this figured veneer breaks along the grain like this and I have a much better chance of making it much less noticeable if I just do that patch. And besides making a diamond shape I'm not going to cut away veneer that's that's fine. Some of these edges I'll, I'll smooth out. You know, I'll cut along here. But I won't do too much of that till after I make my patch. I'm going to use alcohol. I want to clean off this area. I want to see the wood you know, better so I can select a patch. I'll keep going till this is clean. Well, I may never get the rag a hundred percent clean, but I can see the wood now. What a great example of a flame figure. seems like the damage is where like there was a pretty good flame pattern coming up here you know like maybe something like that this piece isn't big enough I'm not uh, positive I've got enough here to choose from This might work. This has possibilities. Boy, I wish I had the larger piece that this came from. No, it might it might work. See, it needs to be more oriented like there, and so I'm missing. It's not big enough. I'm going to reverse this tape and see what it looks like in this orientation. Hmm, this, uh, this could conceivably work. I got this straight center line. I'm straightened up here. I've got some little flame figure here. This larger piece that I have could work too. 
maybe down in this area. It's got this darkness. You know, a lot of it. I'm thinking I may go with this one. And I'm going to cut a practice patch first. I'm going to practice on this piece. This looks like it was part of the uh, piece that I'm going to use. As you're tracing, you begin to see where you're going to kind of smooth out these rough edges. It kind of happens, just happens organically. You don't need to spend a lot of time thinking about it. I think I see a flying moose. You know, not too bad. So I'll choose the area that seems to fit the best, which might be this lower section here, and then start working on these other areas, either, either cutting away at my patch or cutting away the wood underneath a little bit, trim it up, try to make it work. This is way off, though. You know, one section at a time, you attempt to determine what's stopping that from going into place. It's so close. So you've got to start working at it. See this corner over here is holding me up. This little section rather. So I'm getting this piece to fit better, but I'm uh, not going to go too far with it because this isn't my final patch, but I still can, am looking for problem areas like this right here. That's going to cause me problems. You can see that. Okay, I think I've got a few areas straightened up here, and um, it's time to make a, to do it again. This time I'll overlap this tape more than I did last time. That was not a good idea. Okay, I'm going to mark the center of the top here, or center line. because I need that to help me get the tape in the correct position on the piece I'm using as a patch. All right, let's do it again. Let's do it better this time. And then I make the, the through cut with the smaller X-Acto knife. It seems to do a little bit of a cleaner job. All right, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to time this job and I'll let you know how long it took.
This is where some of the uh, rounding off of the ragged edges begins here with this patch. You can see that these areas here are ragged, broken wood of the original veneer. And as I cut, I'm not going to follow all those little bumps. I'm going to smooth it out. And as long as I stay outside the black line, my patch is going to overlap that. And when I'm fitting it, then I'll trim the ragged pieces off the broken veneer. If I can get this thing out of here, that took me about uh, one hour. And that includes a little time for petting a cat. Well, at first glance, <clears throat> it looks pretty good. But um, now the tedious work begins. I want to position this so that every part of the damaged veneer, the original veneer, is covered by my patch here. Tape it into position. see what this looks like. Yeah, I have a bit to, to cut off there. I have a choice. I can cut my new piece or cut this. I feel like I'll have more control if I cut away this existing wood rather than try to adjust my repair piece. This isn't as bad as I thought. I'm moving right along here, just uh, nibbling away at this edge, cleaning it up, constantly checking. Let's go for it. Right. I'm anxious to see uh, what we've got here. Nice and flat, anyway. too soon to see really what this looks like. This is just water. I want to, I got to clean off all this glue. It was also the old wood here around the break was dark and uh, it, I'm going to treat this with oxalic acid at some point. And then we'll really know what it's going to look like. Oh, there was a small little section of veneer missing there. 
Um, I just patched that in off camera. Okay, I'm going to uh, clean this top down. I'm going to clean the, the rest of it. I did the center. I'm going to use uh, denatured alcohol and a scotch Bright pad and a rag, of course. Okay, I'm going to sand the top. Normally, I don't use a block or a sander because I don't want to flatten the top, an antique top, but I will use a block to start off with uh, in, in the patched areas, and I'm going to use 150. If that doesn't work, I may have to go to a coarser grit. I pretty quickly had to go to 100 grit, but it leveled off quickly. And I, now I've got uh, quite a few areas where my fit was good, but I do have areas that need family wood. I also found a bubble. Doesn't surprise me. I doubt that it'll be the last one. Follow the grain here with my knife. Big clamp for a little bubble, but it gets the job done. I feel like I've done a good job of sanding with 150, um, but before I go any further, I want to uh, prepare the edges. I've got some repairs to do and, and a little bit of sanding. That chip off piece some veneer in. Small chip like that I'll use epoxy putty. Even this corner it's so rounded over that I'm just going to use a little epoxy putty to, to level it off a bit But because I'm going to keep it rounded over. There's no point in trying to rebuild a perfect corner there. It's gone. I'm using two pieces of veneer because this veneer is so thick. I would have liked to have done that on the top, but it wasn't practical and it wasn't quite as bad. But I needed to sand the top. I don't need to sand this that much, so. Okay, I've got the edge all patched up and sanded. Uh, I got the top sanded to 150. I'm going to now treat it with oxalic acid. It's very dark in the area around the patch, part of the damaged area. I don't know if it's natural to the grain or if it's still darkened by a water stain. So I'm going to give it a treatment, take care of that problem. I'm going to take 16 ounces of uh, hot water, it's about a half a liter, and a uh, eighth of a cup, or say 30 milliliters of oxalic acid.
right? The top looks good. Last night I uh, came in and rinsed off all the oxalic acid really well. Uh, I noticed at that time uh, some bubbles had come up, which kind of doesn't surprise me. I thought there were some loose places that I couldn't find. In fact, sure enough, this morning I can find some of them, but other, one, other ones have just disappeared. They've shrunk back down. But I've got a few here I want to glue down before the next step. Okay, I've sanded uh, really well to up to 220 with 220. Uh, now I've got to stain uh, some of the putty I've put in here. I'm going to use some Van Dyke Brown dye stain. I'm going to mix it 50 50 with some alcohol and uh, see if that does it. Okay, I'm ready for the first coat of finish. Uh, I'm using the uh, Waterlox Tongue Oil Varnish. It's a very nice, very old-fashioned finish. This piece is going in a dining room, and uh, this varnish is very durable, has a very nice look to it, has great color. It's a beautiful top. You can see that the finish, maybe you can see that the finish is trying to fish eye. In other words, it's reacting in seemingly a weird way. So I just keep brushing it as it dries. Keep brushing that orange peel out. My patch obviously needs color here but I'm real happy with the grain pattern in this area. Wow, it really soaked in. Really looks interesting. If this is the next afternoon, it's been almost 24 hours. <clears throat> I'm trying to give it the maximum between coats. And I've had a heater on all day too, so... And I've kept the heat up in the shop last night. So it's dried really well, feels dry. I want to put some color on my patch. This part of the patch looks great. Flames flickering right along with the other flames. And this part of the patch is not bad at all, but the lighter areas are too light. I think I forgot to mention that this is a dye stain, the Van Dyke Brown dye stain, Mohawk, that I was using before. Thinned out a lot. You would call it a spirit stain as opposed to an oil stain. It's very difficult to see what you're doing. You, you're not seeing this. 
this flashes off it looks different don't want to get it too dark okay now time for the second coat uh, there's no sanding required at this time or needed uh, the bottom will also get a second coat but I'll do that tomorrow There's my patch. Uh, it needs more color, but that's good. That means I didn't put too much on. Where fisheye tries to form, which is just in this area, a lot less than yesterday, but I just keep feathering it out. It's drying. And we'll have more on that later. The patch is looking pretty good. I can see where it needs a little more work, but uh, so far so good. Okay, 24 hours has gone by. It's dried really well. Ready for another coat, but first, uh, my patch needs a little work. My patch has good color, uh, but I think I've gone as far as the dye stains can take me. There's too much of the light areas and not enough of the dark. There's a lot of dark areas around here. This side of the patch is good. This is too much and too much contrast between the light area and that dark area all around here. I'm going to use Mohawk Van Dyke Brown Finishers Glaze. Uh, think of it as a, a, a fast drying, heavy bodied oil stain. There's two areas here, you know, an area here and an area here that want to be darker, but they're just not uh, dark enough. Okay, I've let that glaze touch-ups uh, dry for about an hour, <clears throat> so I'm ready to put the third coat on. And once again, I don't need the sand. It's still soaked in an awful lot. And uh, when I do put this coat on and I go over the glaze touch-ups, I just go with one swipe. Um, you got to be careful that the varnish doesn't disrupt the glaze. These two are the worst damage on the base, and I'm going to patch those in with uh, pieces of veneer. These other two places are so small, I'll glue down any loose veneer, but I may just fill those in. All right, the top is dried really well. Uh, my patch looks great. Uh, what I did with the color, with the glaze, really helped, but I need to do more of it. I've got enough finish on here now that I can sand, so I'm going to sand it with 320, and then I'll do my glaze work, and then another coat. I've been able to sand this really well uh, with the block. I had used this block when I sanded it for wood. I've just got to be really careful 
around my patch. I need to get this area leveled off. I've sanded as much as I've dared. I, I actually was able to sand a lot better than I thought I would at this point. Um, got a ways to go to level this off, but I'm going to wipe down the top and do the glazing. I'll wipe it off using a Mohawk wash, wax wash remover. <laughs> and uh, there's something about this product that helps uh, prepare the surface really well for the next coat. I suppose you could use uh, paint thinner if you didn't have this. So I need to look at this now while it's wet. Remember what I need to do. I'm using the same glaze that I used yesterday and the same brush. Question is going to be can I can I make this dark enough? Okay, I'm ready for the fourth coat, but first I'm going to drop some varnish into these low-lying areas. Okay, the, the top has dried really well overnight, but I'll let it continue drying. In the meantime, I want to get on this back on this base repairs. This is the same uh, Van Dyke Brown thinned out. Van Dyke Brown dye stain that I've been using all along. These smaller chips like this along the bottom edge I'm going to fill with epoxy putty. And then the, the same stain uh, found a little loose veneer on the column here. stain is dried on my little patches here. I'm sanding the top lightly with 500. I've got one light. Uh, power's out. There's a big storm. Our house has a standby generator and I've run an extension cord over there and uh, I have this one light. And then very lightly with a uh, 3M ultra-fine Scotch-Brite pad. I'm not quite done sanding this top yet, but I realized I want to assemble the table before I sit, go any further. Okay, this is still uh, day two without power. Actually, not two days. We're approaching the 24-hour mark. Uh, we have power on the first floor of the house with a standby generator. I don't have power in the shop here, uh, but at least we have sunlight now, so that's something. I've attached the apron frame here. Now I attach these pieces.
You know, a lot of the furniture I worked on was built during a time where there weren't any electric lights, and I've often wondered what that was like and how difficult it might have been. In a shop here, well, I'm finding out what it was like. This gives me a chance to uh, clean and wax this base before assembly. I like using crud cutter, although I think any cleaner with the word degreaser in it would work fine. And I spray the cleaner on a soft shop towel. I should say a paper shop towel. I don't spray, spray directly on a piece of furniture. Okay, now I can begin the waxing process. And I'm going to use uh, the Gilboy's Antique Gold. And I apply it using a 4 aught steel wool. These are the original nails. I thought the fact that they're cut nails didn't reveal anything about the age. But then I noticed the heads. The heads of the nails appeared to have been made with a hammer, which in the early days of cut nails, they still had to put heads on each nail. I always try to put them back where I found them. I put the uh, screws back in the same holes, too, that they came out of. Okay, I've got to, I've got to wax up this uh, apron. I'm installing the glass, and, and this is the back. Uh, Interestingly enough, this is all hand plane. Well, there you have it. A uh, very nice 19th century pier table. Um, it had a lot of uh, minor damage. It needed a lot of uh, cleaning and waxing. But the main issue was the top, of course, and where I made this patch. And uh, I'm not quite finished with this top, believe it or not. I'm not going to try to rub it out today. This coat is uh, less than 24 hours old. I need to let this dry to rub it out. But I'll just use some steel wool and some wax, probably. But uh, overall, I think it looks pretty good. There are going to be a lot of people who are going to say, geez, I should have re-veneered the entire top. And uh, I certainly respect that opinion. It's a valid suggestion. Um, but anyone who says that, I feel like they haven't ever veneered an antique tabletop before. Uh, there's nothing easy about it. And besides, the real thing is that I, I wanted to save the original wood. This veneer is incredible. Uh, I'm, we're not trying to eliminate the history of the piece. Here's the history of the piece. Here's the history. <laughs> history is written all over it. And that's what we're trying to preserve. I've got 30 hours in this job, and I use these tools and materials.
And if you like my video, please hit like, share. Feel free to share it on other platforms. I really appreciate it.